In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make an Arduino or NodeMCU based weather station using DHT11 or DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor and display it using an OLED display. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. The DHT11 and DHT22 are both low cost very basic and slow temperature and humidity sensor which can be used for basic data logging. Despite being slower, they are very stable and consumes low power and provides relatively high measurement accuracy. The single bus digital signal is output through a built-in ADC which is easy to read using any microcontroller. The single bus interface saves the I.O. resource of any microcontroller board. The operating voltage is between 3 volt to 5 volt and the sampling period for DHT11 is 1 hertz or 1 reading every second and for DHT22 it is 0.5 hertz or 1 reading every 2 seconds. Hence you cannot query them more than once every second or 2. The DHT sensors are made of two parts, a captive humidity sensor and a NTC temperature sensor. The NTC temperature sensor is actually a variable resistor whose resistance decreases with the increase in temperature. For measuring humidity, two electrodes with a moisture holding substrate between them is used. When the humidity changes, the conductivity of the substrate changes or in other words, the resistance between these two electrodes changes. This change in resistance is measured and processed and is sent to the microcontroller. A very basic chip inside the sensor does the analog to digital conversion and spits out the digital signal which is read using a microcontroller. Here is a comparison chart of the two sensors. Looking at this, it is very clear that the DHT22 outshines DHT11 in every aspect. However, if accuracy is your concern and you are ready to pay a bit higher price, go for DHT22. Otherwise, DHT11 should be good for you. OLED or organic light emitting diode is a light emitting diode in which the emissive electroluminescent layer is a film of organic compound that emits light in response to electric current. OLEDs are used to create digital displays such as television screens, computer monitors, portable systems such as mobile phones, handheld gaming consoles and PDAs. An OLED display works without a backlight because it emits visible light. There are many types of OLED display available in the market based on their size, color, brand, protocol, SPI or I2C, passive matrix or active matrix control scheme. To know more about OLED display and to know how to connect multiple OLED display using TCA9548 multiplexer, check out my tutorial number 7, OLED display using Arduino and NodeMCU. The link is in the description below. Let's have a closer look at this display. At the back of this display, there are heaps of SMD capacitors and resistors soldered on board. But since it's an I2C device, we only care about these two pins, SCL and SDA. The display connects to Arduino using only four wires, two for power and two for data, making the wiring very simple. The data connection is I2C and the interface is also called two wire interface. The onboard pins can be in different order. So always triple check before hooking it up to your project. Operating voltage is between 3V to 5V, but it's best to use the guidance from the manufacturer's data sheet. In picture, these displays look very big, but practically speaking, they are tiny. They are made up of 128 by 32 or 64 individual OLED pixels and do not require a backlight. Just have a look at this and see how small it is. Even though it's very small, they are very useful in electronic projects. This is how an OLED display is connected to either Arduino or NodeMCU. The setup using Arduino or NodeMCU is very simple. We just need to connect the OLED to the I2C pins and the temperature and humidity sensor to any one of the digital pins. In this setup, I have connected the OLED to A5 and A4 and the sensor to D8. Now let's look at the code. Let's start by including the DHT and the OLED libraries. In the setup section, we initialize the display and then in the loop section, we loop through every two seconds and read the sensor and display the result on the OLED display. Here is a quick demo using Arduino.
same as the previous setup, the OLED display connects to the Node MCU using D2 and D1 pins and the sensor connects to the D3 pin. The code is also same where we start by including the DHT and OLED libraries. Then in the setup section, we initialize the display and then in the loop section, we loop through every two seconds and read the sensor and display the result on the OLED display. So this is how the actual setup looks like. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. There are three breakout board in this 100 cm by 100 cm assembly. Each board can be used with either Arduino or Node MCU and DHT11 or DHT22 sensor or sensor module. Once I had my design ready, I just had to upload the Gerber file to the PCBWay's website and then select the type, color and any other customization that I want and then just send it for fabrication. For my project, I chose the black color. PCBWay ships from China to most of the countries of the world within 3 to 7 business days. Talking about the quality, it's absolutely mind blowing. The board can be used with either Node MCU or Arduino Nano. Temperature and humidity readings can be collected using either DHT11 or DHT22 module or by using one of these sensors with a 10K resistor. The bottom section of the board is for the OLED display. The attached Gerber is a bit different from what you see on screen. I made a bit of modification in the final version and moved the sensor a bit far from the microcontrollers. Since I care a lot about my sensors and microcontrollers, I'm not soldering them directly to the board. Instead, I'm soldering female pin headers to the board which will house all the sensors and microcontrollers. Just for the sake of this video, I'm soldering female pin headers on both sides for Arduino and Node MCU. However, in your setup, you will need either Arduino or Node MCU. Let's first test this board using Arduino. Now let's test this using a Node MCU board. Looks perfect. I'm going to use this board in my next project where I'll be sending temperature and humidity readings to my Raspberry Pi based home server where I'll be storing them in my SQL database. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.